So I work at a rather large company with a bunch of other fine folks, so I get a chance to talk to a lot of people, and one of them gave me their chainsaw so I can try to fix it. Now I didn't get much information about it, which is pretty common, as most people mistreat them and put them away with fuel and oil in them, which is something I would not recommend doing. Hopefully this one was treated a lot better, but to be honest, that's a lot of wishful thinking. In today's video, we look at this chainsaw and the problem is that I don't know much about it, but there's probably a good chance it's not going to start, otherwise why would they even give it to me? Now, I'm going to try and repair this chainsaw, but yours might be a little different, so it might not work on yours. If things aren't working out for you, like in the video, please ask about it and I'll be glad to answer your questions. Now, every homeowner should have a lawnmower and a trimmer, but not everyone needs a chainsaw. If you thought people treated their mowers badly, try a chainsaw. They're typically used once or twice and then put away and forgotten about until a storm knocks down a tree. Only then do they realize that it won't start. Now, this could easily be avoided. It only takes a bit of effort before you put it away. Unfortunately, I don't think any extra effort was given to this one. The first thing I want to do is look around and see if there's anything obviously wrong with it, and this time we actually do find a few issues. The first item is the purge bulb is broken, which means it's going to be tough to start even if the fuel system was in great condition. The next item is a loose chain. Now that doesn't point to anything broken, but it does mean we'll have to keep an eye on it and see if we need to replace a few parts so the chain can stay taut. If we take a closer look, you can see that the adjustment bolt for the bar is out of place. That's most likely the reason why the chain has an issue. The next step is to check the fuel tank and see if it has anything in it, which it does. Now since we know it has some fuel in it, I think it's worth a shot to try and start it. You never know, it might just run. Well, there's no point in trying to lose my shoulder trying to start this one because it's not wanting to do anything. The next step is to try and help it to start and run, and the way I'm going to do that is to put some fuel into the carb's throat and then see if it'll start and run on its own. If it does run, it means we have a working ignition system and enough compression for the engine, which means it's not worn out. Luckily, it started and ran for a few seconds, which is great news. It means we have a working ignition system and enough compression from the engine. That means we need to look at the fuel system and the carb as the reason why this engine won't start. Now, this chainsaw wasn't very dirty, which, to be honest, is a little strange, but I'm still going to give it a quick cleaning. That way, my hands will stay clean as I work on the carb or the fuel tank. It's not necessary to do this, but it is nice to give it back to my coworker looking better than when they gave it to me. The other reason I need to clean the chainsaw is because I need to make sure the oiling system is working like it's supposed to. From previous comments I've received, I need to clean under the side cover and also the bar area so oil can make it to the bar. I really do appreciate all the advice I get. It really helps out. After removing the cover on this one, I am absolutely shocked by how clean it is here. I know I've joked about people buying these to cut up a limb or two and then putting them away, never to be seen again for years, but I hate to say it, I think that's the case for this one. Now my theory isn't only based on the lack of oil and sawdust under the cover, but also the overall condition of the body of the saw and the lack of wear and tear on it. Now there's nothing wrong with it, but it is nice to see someone buy a good brand for a small job versus buying a cheaper saw from a big box store for a lot less. While I was putting the bar and chain back on, I couldn't tell if they're the original ones, but I can say they're in really good condition. But if I had to make a guess if they were the originals, I'd have to say yes. I really do think this saw only has a few hours on it. An easier way to check would have been to inspect the teeth on the clutch drum, but unfortunately, I didn't do that while I had the saw. So this saw is very interesting in its design. To get to the nuts that hold the carb to the engine, we have to take a few parts off the body. The first part is the entire handle section, which consists of the rear handle and trigger along with the front handle around the body. Fortunately, it's a lot easier than it sounds. All we have to do is remove three screws and disconnect the throttle linkage to the trigger, and then we can carefully remove it. Once the handle is out of the way, all we need to do is remove the last screw that holds this cover on, then we'll be able to get a good view of the carb and the fuel lines. Now we didn't need to get to this point to realize that one of the fuel lines going to the bulb was broken, but we did need to do all this work so we could replace it. Now after both nuts and yet another screw was removed, we can then slide the filter base off the studs and then we can swing it out of the way. 
Now, before we do anything else, I want to look at how the lines are ran and hopefully figure out how bad the damage really is. So it appears the longer port on the bulb connects to a fuel line that goes to the tank on the right side. Then the short port seems to connect to a port on the left side of the carb. And then the last fuel line seems to run from a port on the lower right side of the carb and works its way across the bottom into the left side of the tank, which is also broken. Even if you didn't know what the purpose was for each of the fuel lines, looking at them before removing them should help figure out how the lines go. Now, if for some reason your lines were so badly damaged that you couldn't figure out the routing, then check on this platform and there should be a video like this one to help out. Now, after pouring out the fuel from the tank, it's very obvious that this fuel was not going to work anymore because it doesn't even look or smell like gasoline anymore. That means this fuel has to be well over two years old, if not more. Now once I get the carb off the studs, I'll then take it apart to look at the metering diaphragm. Now its job is to control fuel flow through the carb, which means it needs to be soft and pliable. If it's not, then it's not going to work like it should and we'll have to replace it. Now after removing it, we can see the needle and rocker arm assembly and besides some dark fuel here and there, it looks pretty good in there. Unfortunately, I can't say the same thing for the diaphragm. Now if I tap on it, you can hear that it's quite stiff and it's not moving like it should. If this was a new diaphragm, it wouldn't make any noise at all. Now this diaphragm also looks really strange, so I'm going to take it out and get a better look at it. Now after removing it from the pumping section, I can see that I'm in a lot of trouble. And the reason is because this diaphragm is special. So what do I mean by special? Well, a typical diaphragm doesn't have all these extra small openings along the edges. The reason it has all these extra holes is because the carb is special. Unfortunately, that makes it unique, and unfortunately, unique makes it expensive and tough to source. Now, thanks to online markets, sourcing the parts isn't as tough as it used to be, but the prices, well, they're still going to get you there. A new OEM carb is $75, which is outrageous. And if I wanted to go the more affordable route, an OEM diaphragm kit is $25. Now, that's just for the diaphragms. That's not for a rebuild kit. So now I have to make a decision on what to do. Do I get a loan and get an OEM carb or just buy an aftermarket carb for a fraction of the price? To be honest, I really don't want to spend any money, so I might have to get creative. So I'm going to leave you with my question, which is, what should I do next? One, buy an overpriced OEM carb. Two, buy a cheap knockoff carb kit with extra parts for one third the price. Or three, buy an OEM diaphragm kit for $25. Now these are pretty tough choices. And to be honest, I don't think you could go wrong with any one of these choices, which means whichever one you choose is probably going to work just fine. So while I make my choice and wait for whatever it is I'm going to choose to come in the mail, I'm going to use my time wisely and replace the fuel lines and purge bulb. Now if you've been following my videos, you'll know that when it comes to chainsaws, they sometimes need everything replaced, which means it usually takes two videos to get one done. That means in the next video, you'll see the choice I made and hopefully get this quality chainsaw back up and running again. Another reason why this chainsaw might not be starting is a stuck piston ring. This would reduce the engine's ability to compress the air fuel mix. You would know the compression is low by doing a compression test. The fix is to remove the piston and free the ring. So in the end, we're on the way to getting this chainsaw back up and running, and hopefully in the future, when I give the chainsaw back to the owner, they'll empty the fuel system before putting it away. Otherwise, we're going to see this saw again in a few more years. Thank you for watching. I really do appreciate your time here. Please feel free to ask me any questions about this project or your own projects, and I hope to see you in the next video.